it's uh, just about eight o'clock on Wednesday the 29th of July and we're ready to go we're aiming for Etruria today uh, that'll be sort of midday stop and then get through Stoke uh, back into open country south of Stoke by tonight <laughs> Deep lock. And that's engine lock. So we're going to let the boat go through that's approaching and I shall go back to the boat and bring ours through. It's actually an industrial estate. There's a car coming up now. of Stoke-on-Trent now and the landscape has changed it's more industrial now and there's some residential on the other side there's a few more people about now surprisingly there's still quite a bit of uh, waterside wildlife though we've just seen a kingfisher just before the lift bridge just a brief glimpse one flying across the uh, water. That's the first kingfisher we've seen. After all this rural uh, landscape we've been through, we wait until we get to Stoke on Trent before we see a kingfisher. That's usually how it works though. There's quite a lot of buddleia down here. We've not seen a lot of buddleia either till just. So we, uh, I think we're about two miles from Etruria now. So we've uh, we've left the uh, countryside behind, and now we're entering the city outskirts, and we'll soon be at Etruria. Oh, there's two uh, bottle kilns there that the camera's picking them up. Not the ones that uh, we saw on the on the way out. Uh, we're a long way from there yet. Here's an old uh, building, probably a pottery building, right up to the canal. It's such a shame these uh, these buildings are derelict. Inhabited by pigeons now. Bridge and then the buildings are a 
little bit smarter this side. I think we're coming up to a lot before long. But these are a bit smarter, aren't they? And I'll side the Bijou residences. incorporated into a sparkling new development but uh, nice to see that they've retained them at lock number three now which is the last lock before the staircase and this is the uh, urban landscape that we can enjoy that's Stoke-on-Trent College over there we've arrived at the top of the staircase at Etruria it's just there under the bridge so it's just uh, setting the lock now it's nearly full so we'll be entering quite soon it's taken us uh, two and three quarter hours to get here this morning so we're on course to uh, get clear of Stoke-on-Trent by tonight we'll just stop at Etruria when we've gone down the staircase sort out the uh, toilet and probably have a cup of coffee it's a bit early for lunch it's only quarter to eleven so I think we'll be uh, going quite soon. Just wait for the nod. She's winding the paddles down so it's, uh, it's full now. It's 11.15, we've stopped to do the toilet, I'm going to have a cup of coffee and a, a biscuit, 
ready for a break. It's taken us three hours to get here and uh, we, we were okay for time so uh, we'll have uh, a bit of a chill out and then set off back on the Trenton Mersey. We've ended uh, our journey on the Colden now. Uh, this is the last little bit of the Colden and then we're on to the Trenton Mersey out of the junction. So that's goodbye to the Colden, hello to the Trenton Mersey. centre of Stoke now more or less. That looks quite idyllic up there but this is the reality of where we are. Urbanisation. That's the A500 there where you can see the traffic queuing. Yep. That's still Trent just about to go through the last lock of the Stoke flight and then we'll be heading towards the uh, A50 Island and Britannia Stadium and after that we're more or less coming out of Stoke on the south side so we're not doing too bad it's only uh, quarter past one and the sun's coming out Stoke on Trent in front. Lots of traffic. Nice to be on the water. We've got a lady helping us at the minute because there's a boat behind us. I'll see us the lock as well. This is the last one in the Stoke flight. So we'll soon be on the level for a bit anyway. I think the next one's at Trenton somewhere. So we're going to try and find somewhere to stop for lunch. Once we've gone through this one and got out of Stoke. See what this afternoon brings.
this was built on the site of a former colliery. So there's a winding wheel here. at Trentham Lock so it was just filling it because the boat's gone down in front of us it's 10 to 3 and we've nearly done for today once we're through this lock uh, we'll be going through <coughs> Trentham past the Wedgwood factory and then um, it's Barlaston where we're hoping to moor up for the night so we'll get moored up fairly early for an evening moor up and that'll do us for today because we've we've been uh, on the go since 8 o'clock this morning we had a brief stop at Etruria for about an hour but we were servicing the boat so uh, we didn't really have a break as such so this is uh, Trenton Lock and it's the last one of the day So it's 20 past 3 and we're moored up for the night, call it a day, we've had a long day, 10 locks, uh, I don't know how many miles but uh, it's the locks that, uh, <laughs> that are tired here, um, we've had a decent day, we've got through Stoke and we're out the other side and we're still alive so <laughs> we're okay. I've got a little bit of work to do on the boat tonight, so with us stopping early, it's given me the opportunity to get that done. And, uh, just got to replace a couple of fenders that we lost some days ago now. But we've had one or two bumps and bangs this, this morning, so uh, I want to get the fenders back on. So we've got a bit of scratching on the hull of the boat. So that's another day done and we're back on the Trenton Mersey. Hi. Hi. <laughs> that's it for today. Pardon? That's it for today. <laughs> we're getting there. Okay. Yeah. We've seen them at most of the locks through Stoke because they've been behind us and the lady there's gone forward and helped Sue with the locks to speed things up a bit. So that's the end of another day. I mentioned that I've uh, got some fenders to replace. These are the ones. This one is alright but I need to put another two of them on because one was on there. And another was on there. So 
so those two need replacing. Fortunately I carry a couple of spares so I shall put those on very shortly. These are my new replacements and I've just got to uh, unwind the line and get them on. But I've got to take the old ones off first. I've deliberately tied the boat up loose so I can get at these and every time a boat goes past it rolls her around a bit so she's just rocking a little bit at the minute till the water settles down. Now we can have a go. Tea's mashed. Thank you. Okay. You got some These are the sorts of questions that you get. <laughs> that one's free. A bit like Blue Peter is one I did earlier. And of course, as soon as I start doing this, a procession of boats goes past and rocks the boat about as it's doing now. As I say, I deliberately tied it up loose so I could get access to these. But ever since, it's been moving about. I just need now to get the, uh, the right height on them. So I'll drop that in and pull it up. I don't know what this film's going to look like because I'm holding the camera and trying to do this at the same time and it's not working. So I think we'll probably not use this footage. Oh. It wants to be just above the water. at the right height there so I'm going to tie this off but I'm not going to film it because I'm going to end up dropping my camera in so that's replacing a fender so that's the finished job almost I just I've always got a tail of rope so what I do is just tie it off with a cable tie Stop the rope, the tail end of the rope from being loose and prone to being snagged on something because it's snagging that pulls them off. If your boat just catches the lock gate at the wrong position, the fender will snag into the construction of the gate get wedged in and then it just rips the rope apart because bearing in mind a boat probably weighs 12 15 tons and even though it's not going very fast there's a hell of a lot of force there there's three cable ties on there now so I'll just snip them off I'm going to pick the bits up, don't worry, I'm not leaving them on the towpath. So that's in position. Ready to protect the hull of the boat. And then that back one. It's a little bit higher, but it doesn't matter. It just protects that edge. So there we go, 
you can see how loose the boat is it must be 18 inches off the uh, bank but I'll tighten it up once I've done the other fender I'm going to do the other one now but I'm not filming that that one's up there under that window it's actually a bit closer to the bank there so it might struggle a bit more so that's replacing the fender